Uh, I really like these curtains. It's such a shame that I have to take them off to put something else. They don't match with the room anymore, but I don't want to be in them. I think maybe, hmm, maybe I could do a cosplay with this. I am Alice and today I'm going to show you how to make a black lobelia cosplay. If you don't know this character, it's because it's a character inside another anime, so it's kind of like a little bit like, you know, <laughs> I, I kind of like the idea of characters inside animes and, and it's like, yeah, I, I kind of go for the very unknown or, or the least expected characters. But I love the design when I saw her, she wears a corset and she wears this see-through skirt and has very long white hair, it's, it's just amazing! And even if she only appears for one episode, for me that was in love a fair sight. So I actually started drafting the pattern for this cosplay somewhere around June. If you're in my Patreon then you already have a pattern for a corset which I made a mock-up for but I never actually got to make the actual clothing or the actual cosplay because you know life happens and holidays and summer and, and I kind of left it behind a little bit and kind of lost interest of it but now I decided that it is time to finish her because I already have the pattern and it's not so difficult once you have the pattern. Oh, by the way, you can download the pattern in the description below if you want to, but if you prefer, you can just use normal corset pattern and modify it slightly so it fits your purposes. On this occasion, I will be using my curtains. Yep, these are my old curtains. If you follow me on social media, you may know that I am redecorating one of the rooms in my house and we don't need these curtains anymore, they are actually quite new, but we decided to just use blinds instead because we are going to have painting and things going around and it's much easier to just put them up and you don't need to just be cleaning this stuff which is very difficult to take off. I'm afraid of heights and I hate going up a ladder anyway, so I thought a good thing to do with the curtains instead of binning them was just to use them for cosplay and I'm going to be making the corset with these curtains. So remember that cosplay doesn't have to be super expensive and you can just use curtains or fabrics from old duvets or from your sheets that you don't use anymore. If you don't have a lot of money to make cosplay and to buy lots of new fabrics you can use whatever you have at home and most of the time a cosplay will look as good or even better than if you were using new fabric. Just try to use your imagination and use whatever you have around and you can just make some awesome stuff with it. Let's see if you actually like what I, what I make with these curtains. Let's take a closer look at the fabrics I will be using. My curtains were a type of damas with a lovely pattern in silver and it was perfect for Lobelia. Um, because I am doing a corset with them, I decided to add heavy cotton as a middle layer and a thinner cotton for the lining. In theory, you do not need to interface and line your corset, but the extra layers of fabric will give it more structure and I highly recommend it. Other materials include boning, unfortunately the only one I had at home was this plastic rigeline, which I do not recommend because it is quite flimsy, I had to do something with it which I didn't like so much, but I wanted to keep this project as cheap as possible and this was the one I had at home. I will also be using bias tape to hide all the edges and several meters of ribbon for the back and this organza ribbon for the ruffle as well and of course eyelets for the closure. First step is to place your pattern on top of the fabric. All my patterns come without seam allowance and as you can see I only added it to the sides as I am finishing the top and bottom with bias tape. I also needed to cut the interfacing for my pattern and the main fabric. And as usual, cuts may or may not be required to finish this project. I recommend you to use weights, but 
you know, a cat can work. If you have a rotary cutter at home, I find it much easier to cut the fabric, but of course, fabric scissors will do as well. And once you have cut all the fabric, you should end up with six pieces for each pattern piece, two for each layer. I'm going to start assembling layers. In this case, I am doing the lining first. You simply have to place the pieces right sides together and sew them in almost straight lines. To save some time, feel free to sew the whole section in one go and sew it. Once you have completed one side, do the same with the other. You can also join the center front now, but remember the top and bottom edges have to remain open. Congratulations, you have sewn your first layer. You just have to do it again again. It is now time to press those seams. And once again, you may or may not need a cat for this. Much better, don't you think? Don't forget to press the top and bottom openings at the front so it's easier to sew them later. And now a word from our sponsors. Oh yeah, we don't have sponsors. Let's carry on. As I mentioned before, I am using Rigelin and I thought it would be a good idea to just sew the boning directly to the corset and save some time. Well, my machine didn't agree with me. And I ended up sewing the corset like this. Lesson learned. Use better materials and get the right boning for the corset. But in a pinch, this worked. And by the way, it would be super easy for me to edit this video to omit my mistakes, but I think it's much more useful if I show them to you so you get it right. Here's how my interlining looks. It is not too bad, but I found out later it wasn't as supportive as I would have liked. I also added some gross grain ribbon to the waistband to release some tension from the stitches. We can finally assemble the pieces together. I am just stitching the interlining to the back of my shell fabric so I can treat them both as one. I am sewing all around the pieces using a basting stitch, but do check the instructions on your pattern if you made boning channels, as it will be slightly different from this. At this point, I noticed my fabric was already fraying on the edges, and I decided to trim it and make it even but you can save this step for later when you are adding the bias tape. I am attaching the lining next. In this case, you only want to sew the sides of the lining with the fabric right sides together. You can now turn your fabric so the right side is out. I iron the sides of the corset, making sure the lining didn't peek from the front. And similar to what I did before, I am basting together just the top of my corset using a long stitch on my machine. If you use metal or hard plastic boning, be careful not to catch it with it. And now I'm going to show you how to make those boning channels that I tried to skip before. First, 
You want to make sure your bones will fit in the channel, so I am just marking with an erasable pen where my channel needs to be. I am sewing a parallel stitch from my seam, following the width I marked with my pen. Most boning channels follow a seam, however, you want to make an extra boning channel at the back to reinforce the eyelet closure. Remember to run a second line of parallel stitches to create the channel. As I said before, follow the instructions in the pattern to do all these in the correct orders, as all the other channels are sewn before you attach the lining and the ones at the back are sewn after. With your fabric ready, you just need to insert the boning. Just make sure they are slightly shorter than the length of your corset so they don't get caught by the sewing machine when we sew the edges. Now I can finally close the bottom of my corset and add the last few details. Time to attach the bias tape. As usual, open the ribbon and place it on the edge. Sew a straight line on top of the first fold and parallel to the edges. You can now fold the ribbon around the edges and stitch it again, making sure you cut it on the back. Do this for the top and the bottom. For the eyelets, I first marked where I wanted to place them. Mine are about 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters apart. There are different ways to attach them, but first you want to make holes on the fabric. I recommend you to use the eyelets that come with a ring at the back, as they are sturdier and don't come loose as easily. And I use this tool to attach them permanently. You just have to press firmly. Now repeat a million times until you have all your eyelets. Well done! We have almost finished! For the ruffles, I decided to use ribbon as it is much easier to control. I am using a gathering foot to ruffle it at the middle. The way it works is by changing the tension on your machine. The thread pulls and ruffles the fabric. I needed several attempts until I found a consistency I liked. Now I just needed to pin it to my corset and sew it with a zigzag stitch. I laced my corset leaving bunny ears in the middle so I can tie it by myself. And this part was finally done. Let's move on to the skirt. For this part of the cosplay, I am going to use a lightweight fabric like the chiffon. It is very nice and flowy, but that also means that it is a bit difficult to handle. I will be using my pattern to check the width of the tears. I just need to mark the width, as it is much easier to rip this fabric than use the scissors. Kitana is helping. Too. Just cut the corner with the scissors and pull from both sides. The top tier has a bit of a curve, so I will be cutting that extra fabric with the scissors. And now more ruffles, but this time with my ruffler foot. I may need to go a bit quicker.
Perfect! This tool is very handy. I meant the ruffler foot, not the cat. I attach the ruffles to the bottom of my skirt. And then I top stitched it to make it look nicer. However, I decided to change to my overlocker to tidy the edges. I run two lines of parallel stitches to the top of my second tier. This will be to gather the fabric. Each tier is a bit narrower than the following one, so I gathered the fabric so they would match. Remember your ruffle should be facing the inside of your fabric before you sew. I'm not saying this because I did it wrong the first two times. You can now sew it all together. And here is another row of top stitching. Once you have assembled all the layers, you can add a waistband. But remember that your waist needs to be gathered as well. As this part won't be visible in my cosplay, I am just using by a tape to tidy the edge. And before I turn the tape and sew it, I inserted a piece of ribbon on each side. And once I attached the last piece of fabric, my skirt was finished. Well, I call it skirt. They call it playground. And here is some footage of me testing the cosplay. You can see on the sides the boning wasn't strong enough and it doesn't look straight. I may need to reinforce it in the future as this is a structural problem. I also need to change the ribbon at the back as mine was too short and I couldn't lace it by myself. However, it was enough for a test. I was, however, quite happy with the shape of the skirt. I think a fabric like organza would have made it look fuller, but I kind of like the flowy effect of this fabric. cosplay was lots of fun, but it's not finished yet, I still have to make the jacket, the hat and all the other details. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can be the first to know when a new video is out. Maybe click the like button? That keeps the channel going and helps me reach other cosplayers. Remember that you can download the patterns in the link below and you can also join my Patreon if you want to be the first to get all the new goodies plus lots of extra content. Thank you very much for watching, I will see you in the next project, bye!